God, we do want to thank you again for letting us see this day. Almighty God, Lord, we know that your, your eyes are going to and fro. Your ears is listening to the prayers of the saints. God, I want to be one of them that you said knock and be opened and seek and you'll find. Ask and it'll be given. Everyone that knocks, you said to be open. Everyone that sought finding those that asked, it was given. God, help us to cast all our cares and our questions and decisions upon you. Thank you, Lord. God, I love you. I do love you deep down inside of me. God, and I want to strive more harder to enter in a straight gate. For straight is the gate and there is a way that leads to you. Oh, God, I've got to find you. got to keep you in my sight, Lord. I have to have that promise of Christ in us, the hope of glory. Oh, God, that is our only hope, Father. It's Christ in us. Lord, there is no hope out there besides Jesus Christ. Lord, in that, that the law couldn't do, Jesus, you done it. And we come to you today for the needs of your people. God, you said if just two or three of us are gathered together in your name, that you'd be in our midst to bless us. Oh, God, I thank you. God, help us to strive more harder. Pray more sincerely. Ask in faith, Almighty of Heaven, be it so, God. Lord, we ask you to move for your people. Move, God, and, and all our families, Lord, you can see those that have young'uns. Lord, I pray that not a one will perish. But we know that you taught us, Jesus. Marvel not. You must be born again. When you spoke to Nicodemus. How can this be when I'm old? God, you said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. That's just which is born in the spirit of spirit. Marvel not. You told him. You must be born again or you cannot enter in to the kingdom of heaven. And that's my strife, Lord. God, I've given you almost my whole life and I can't fail you. Now help me not to come short of your glory. And Lord, we ask for these needs to be met. All of these prayer requests, God. We ask for you to answer them and cast your eyes upon this area. Lord Jesus, move for all the shepherds, the pastors of your sheep. God, we need you in these days. God, these are perilous times. These are times that you said that they're more lovers of pleasures and lovers of God. These are the times that you said you was going to, when you come, you're going to come like a thief in the night. 
when nobody's expecting it. Oh, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, Lord. Search me today and cast your eyes upon this area. For we behold you as the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. In the name of Jesus, and we pray for the re all the requests. Well, there's not a whole lot came in since we've been here, or maybe a hundred of these. But we pray for God that ones that has not been answered, answer them. We'll honor you and we'll praise you. We'll give you all praise. God, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We praise you. If you've got a need of praying for somebody, reach out in faith right now for them. God, you see those that has a special request in their hearts or a special need in their life of family. Let it be so, God, that your great spirit will search us, search our hearts. You said the Lord will provide. I remember when they, they had the fire, they had the woods. Jesus. The little old boy asked his daddy, That we've got the fire, we've got the wood, but we don't have the sacrifice. Lord, I pray. And Abraham said, God, the Lord, will provide the sacrifice. Hallelujah, Jesus. I want to think about that scripture so much. We found that Abraham was ready to offer up his son, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, when he, when he heard a, a ram blatant in the bushes. Had himself hung up. God, I know that must have been some kind of a trial. Lord, I don't know a human being out of all of these billions of people over seven or eight billion people in this whole world we're living in. Probably ain't a one out there and all them billions would have had the faith of Abraham that somehow or another <laughs> that you're going to spare his only son. Jesus, I'm so grateful that you came as the only Son of God. But you suffered for us. You took that laceration for us. You was nailed to the tree. It was we the ones that said. You the only person ever lived upon this earth that was accountable that never sinned. God in heaven, we thank you. Glory to God. Lord, you told us that we was conceived in iniquity and born in sin. But you wasn't, Jesus. We come to you for help today. Giving you all praise. God, we ask you to bless this week. We'll give you thanks, Lord. Bless the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord. And if you got a need, let him meet it. You know, the, have the faith of Abraham. He said the Lord will provide a sacrifice. God, I've never read nowhere anybody was at such a trial. But you didn't let him down because he believed. God, look up upon us today and you see. God, you see, Lord.
God, I'm striving to enter the straight gate, striving to please you. God, I've never took none of these revivals of countries that I've been in as a vacation. God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, Lord, for mercy. And let everyone this year know they're just a handful of us, Lord, but you move. Move in their hearts. Move and meet their needs. And all the glory will be to praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Praise your name. Thank you, Jesus. God, we pray you bless the churches in this area, Lord. We know we're living in a different time now, but not a different God. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Bless your name in Jesus' name. And everybody praise him. Glory. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. You know, Jesus said that be a great falling away. You know, I was just thinking this morning that a big old church, you know, I put every dime in that church a personal money not too far of China. You know, see the what a thousand or more people. See the time I never went out there in those days it wasn't full. That shows you how far people got from God. Because I hadn't failed God myself. I've strived and stayed in the way. Straight as a gate. But you know what? It's a, it's a different world. I've seen the time we put up tents out here is way bigger than this and it wouldn't be an empty seat with three or four of them big old Tractors and trailers out there. But but it's everywhere all across America. Not that I need places. This is the smallest crowd I've had, and I don't know when. But I'm just telling you that one of these days, y'all going to hit this whole area. How? He'll know. He did tell us that in the last days he'd hit us with whirlwinds, which we call tornadoes, earthquakes. Didn't he tell us that? And some more or another, God's going to get madder than me and madder than you and madder than everybody else put together their madness. Angry. God got angry. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. Didn't he? Some of y'all probably maybe saw the pictures in a book. I've been there three different times. I preached just to see the limits. I never felt the preaching side of it. I had thousands of people outside of that area. But I just, they wanted me to. I said, no. When I seen all them dead bodies turned into stone, <laughs> still in over there. That whole city burnt down with what Obama passed the law you could do. Sodomy. Passed the law, you know. Made of his own law that that man can marry a man, woman marry a woman. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If you could go over there and see hundreds at uh, over 100,000 people, 
I believe right up, maybe, it's just said maybe up to 200,000. When that judgment hit, you'll see, look like cement logs. Turn them into stone. And lots of why. You know, she got all tangled up, I guess, in them. If they had any kids. Well, a lot had a little sense, didn't he? Two or three of them. God told them to get out of there and don't even look back. That's what's wrong now. Too many people looking back, ain't it? Don't look back. Nah. I ought to put this on tape some of these nights and preach it before I leave. Why don't you set your house afire with these? <laughs> Boy, he's kept going. Lord have mercy. I appreciate Sister Terrell. Bless her heart. I know she wouldn't be looking back. But I was thinking about how that here you were running on the wrath of God and you got your wife but her hand all of a sudden She's looking back, and you ain't going to look back. Because <laughs> God don't said, and after a while, he couldn't go over because she turned into a pillar of salt. Ain't that something? Show sure, yeah. it. First time I went over her, she was uh, about that tall. Looked like a real woman and but she was solid salt and I touched her people but I guess there probably been more people visit that in the early days now folks ain't even memories and stuff like that she was a whole woman I've been back there about three or four times because I was preaching on other sides and places not far from there maybe four or five hundred miles <laughs> and last time I went back people, so many people had been by, they pinched and broke her fingers off. You know. They said people from all, every nation in the world. Won't you study? Won't you read it up? Every nation in the world went over there that didn't believe that. That shows you there's a God up yonder. And this ain't no play thing. And I believe, and I always took, that's read You know why people... When the backslider hardly none of them ever come back. You ever notice backsliders? They look back, go back out, and just seem like something. You, you, you just look around the backsliders that ever comes back. Once you get saved and washed in the blood and feel the Holy Ghost, you better not go back. And some, you know, some, I don't, I don't care what you don't believe. I've been there and saw it myself. And you know what? Nobody lives in there. That whole city. Man, they, they built some town outside of there. <laughs> Five or six, seven, eight, ten miles. But ain't no, that, that, that ain't, that nobody lives in there. Man, people sure got the devil scared out of them. <laughs> and man. And you, I, I went through them streets and been there three times in my life. And you see, bodies everywhere turn to stone. Man, I'll tell you one thing. I just want to go to heaven. Yes. Some of you need to read all that. You need to, there's some history on that. Man, and that's what folks are reading. I'm saying that. You got so many people now in church, was in church, but they look back. You don't see them there no more. And most of it's happened since this president's been in office. You know, when you put an infidel in office, a Muslim, that's what he grew up in was Muslim, whether he admits it or not. And first place, we weren't supposed to even have a president. You know, he. you remember when they swore him in, he dropped the Bible, wouldn't touch it. And, and the guy that done it, they done it in secret. 
God showed me he never laid his hand on that Bible. But boy, I'll tell you one thing. When he gets in hell, he would have God. He'd put his feet, hands, body, and everything on it. Y'all don't like it. I don't care if you don't like it. Go to hell with him. I ain't going to hell with him myself. I believe in the Holy Bible. So I believe in the Holy Bible. I'm going to tell you something, folks. This thing's winding up. And if you could... And the Bible said, when she looked back, why don't you read over in Luke? Why don't you read over in the Bible? Turn her into a pillar of salt. The last time I was over, it's been, I don't know exactly when, it's been rains. You know, they hadn't had no rains for a long time. Rains and so forth. People coming by them all over the world, pinching, done got her fingers all broke off. And, you know, they'd come by there, that people from, they said all over the world, people went and saw that. And, and some of them, some of them infidels went and got some of that stuff and went and tested it. You know, just because they didn't want to believe. And she was ready to turn into a pillow of salt. <laughs> Man. And, and still burning in hell. But what would you have done? I hope I'd done like Abraham did. Just kept going. <laughs> but I tell you, but I heard where Jesus come out of that, didn't he? Which was the son of Abraham, which was the son of God. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Have you ever read the genealogy of Jesus? Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. If you can help us in the offering, I know there's not many here, but everything counts with us. And I know they call this Blue Monday. But I used to be out there in the world, and there used to be a word that's saying, Blues, stay away from me. <laughs> blues, don't you let me. That's what I'd be saying. Devil, stay away from me. Blues, stay away from me. <laughs> I can't stand <laughs> blue, sad. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know y'all think I'm crazy, and probably I am. But I'm a Jesus crazy. I said, I'm a Jesus crazy. Or being prayed for and ministered to, and I don't just, uh, pray prayers to be thrown away. I believe. I want to talk about the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost. How many, uh, I'm hoping by this weekend that God will be in part. How many believe we need a revival of the restoring? Of the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Yes, you know, we, you know, we, we got a lot of claimers, but but that's something that God has to to you know. Uh, he knows what we can do, and He knows what we can't do. Yeah. And we're gonna pray here in a moment again, and we'll cut the recorder on. I want God to bless this. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when you find God's will for your life, no matter what it is, if you'll strive, as over in Luke said, strive to enter in the straight gate. Strive with everything that's in your heart. You'll find out. It may be some hardships. You know, I've lost families. You know, I was a seventh son, and I lost, when, when I got the Holy Ghost, some of my own blood families didn't have nothing to do with me, because they was in so deep in the Baptist church, they thought I had totally went into chaos. My oldest brother, well, not my real oldest, but next to the oldest brother, he was a Baptist preacher. And boy, he, you talk about, but you know what? I don't know where I was. I had the jet in those days, but on his deathbed in a hospital, he pastored a church, a big church.
but he sent for me and I flew in there and he died the right I left the room he said I had to see you before I passed because I've been wrong about you you know and I was the last one that saw him I prayed with him and I believe in that as I was leaving he was pointing up but he said I've been wrong he said I've I really got in here. I hadn't seen you in a few years, but I began to search the scriptures and, and follow your messages, and it's all in the Bible. You know, if we get back to that King James Bible, it, 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 somewhere or another, it'll fulfill in our hearts. I said it will fulfill. That's when he said, if you abide in me, and my words abide in you. But right now, there is a I'm going to pray in just a moment. Right now, the, the, the gifts of the Spirit is dormant most places. You know, just look back to your churches. Brother Hill's church been about how many years you've been up there? Forty-something? Huh? Forty-three. Forty-three? Forty-three years is a different spirit, and you other pastors, you know what I'm talking about. There's something is uh, uh, we in a uh, Bible call it an evil and a Holy Ghost generation, <laughs> adulterous. And what probably a lot of us is called fornication, because you know adultery is is. It's some is crazy marriage. But nevertheless, I want to tell you something. God is cleaning the church out. Father, we thank you. We ask you, Lord, put a hunger in our hearts. Put a thirst in our hearts. Put a deep thirst in our hearts, Lord. Hunger. And seek you with all of our hearts. And I've got a couple of scriptures. Then we'll get back. The verse 14, chapter 14, verse 1 said, Follow after charity, desire spiritual gifts, but rather you may prophesy or, you know, have the testimony of Jesus. But I just want to just speak to you on there's a scripture been bearing me put on the whole arm of God you'll find that over in Ephesians but I won't be reading that right now but I believe if we get the whole arm of God on I believe that's going to we're going to have these nine gifts of the Holy Ghost back in the church And whether you know it or not, God's taking the kingdom, the gospel of the kingdom, what he's talking about, he's taking it from America right now. I heard of O'Reilly on TV's I don't know how long back. But you know, he always does a special thing first of the year. But people call in about the Bible or Jesus, you know, for a few. Well, when all of them called in, you know, he does that every year. I hadn't seen it, not seen it, maybe three or four. But anyway, it's been since this president been in. And he said since that president's been in office, Christianity had failed from 85 percent to 92 percent believing in God to down to 8 percent and 12 percent that was three years ago I heard him say that and and we need God yes, yeah. I mean we sit around like that, that ain't nothing happening we have we need God this is this is no fun thing and I believe the only way that we're going to get this back is that follow after love charity and hungry 
if, if us preachers would get hungry, not claim it, you know, a lot of people say, well, I claim this year. It's something that God has to give you. You can, a lot of people want this gift, that gift, but God knows, the Bible said, covet, covet after love and charity and desires, but, but rather that you have the testimony. Prophesy means here, if this particular scripture don't mean the gift of prophecy, it means the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus. God had rather have you than, than just playing around and don't know what you do need, but just to be a testimony of Christ. But God set these gifts into the body of Christ or what we call the church but not the building but today you probably won't find one church in the United States of America over 350 million people in this country right now you probably won't find one church that's got these gifts set in the church operating you may have a lot of claiming it but I'm for is being in here that people, uh, when, when something happens, when people get sick, people used to, when I first come into wholeness, when, when people got sick, they didn't run to the doctor first. Even when I first come into wholeness back, they still had midwives for the women to have their babies, especially the Christians. And if it was complication, the use of the doctor, ever who uh, looked after or saw the new was going to be a complication, they were the only ones that was to be put in the hospital. And don't you know, Jesus is still uh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We have lost... And, and the sad part about it, 50 years ago, when that great revival broke out in the 40s and late 30s and 40s and 50s, people were hungry because it's just like the book of Acts had been turned back. Just like the, the, the book of 1 Corinthians where God is set back in the church. These gifts, all this, these years, over 19, 18 or 1900 years that, that, that the world had been without these deliverers. We have lost. God set these gifts in the church and he knows what's best. If we had the gifts of the spirits in, in churches, I'm talking about all churches across the country, and praying people and, and sanctified people and set aside all weights and sins that beset them people and uh, people that taken up the cross. I believe these churches across America would be full again. I believe that. Especially people. If it's the will of God and some don't stop it, I will be uh, going to uh, out of the country next week, either Saturday or on um, Sunday or Monday. When I get down there in the, I guess southern part of Mexico, there be people that are so hungry. Even though that whole country is about 90%, 80% or 90% Catholicism, but yet that's all they've ever known was a Catholic priest till the last few years. You know, and they were just as sincere uh, going down to him doing a little uh, ABC stuff on Hocus Pocus, Bill I Bocus, your sins be forgiven you. But they're finding out now <laughs> that their sins ain't forgiven them. They found out them yokes ain't broke off of them just because some priest remits your sins. These, 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 these Catholic priests are going to give an account of making people think that, that, that their sins are remitted. Only Jesus can, can get rid of your sins and you got to cry out to God from your heart that you want these sins took out of your life. Yes. And I believe that's one of the hinders. God set in the church first apostles, teachers, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. They're not there no more. 
This was when God organized the, the Jesus Church from the day of Pentecost when it was born. When we got out of of the law, we still under these denominations. We still honor the laws uh, 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 of, of church doctrines. God never meant it to be that way. He didn't mean all these di different beliefs and all these different churches. He said he he uh, put us up on his rock. Jesus Christ, I'll be in my church. And when we get up on that rock, he said the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. God said in the church apostles, they're not there no more. He said in the church prophets. He said in the church evangelists. He said in the church pastors, teachers. They're not there anymore. If he put them in, a, then you'd see people again. In the early days, especially when I got in the 60s and the giant tents, I started in 1926, but I was already street preaching for years and I had a few revivals. There'd be a few people and preachers that seem and invite me to preach at the church here and there. But when I went on a fast at 56 and I come out, I went in a worldwide ministry just overnight. Didn't have no suits or nothing. But God uh, began to speak to people. I didn't ask nobody for nothing. People just, uh, Lord laid on people's hearts. They'd heard and they brought me suits. Just kind of wear down in there to me. And, and you know, help me in shoes. I didn't, uh, uh, one time I, had, I, I was wearing number 12 shoes that somebody else gave me. And I'd put paper in the end. They thought I was long foot. You know, back then they were old long foot was running all over the place. You remember that time that everybody looked at that big foot? They thought I'd Bigfoot. <laughs> Hallelujah, but I didn't care. I had me some shoes. <laughs> he even did look like rocking chair. Hallelujah. At least I wasn't preaching barefooted anymore. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to tell you, but God all the time was what I'm trying to get to here was making me and still making me. You know, preachers ain't made no more. They just choose to do this, do a little studying, but if we'll get back to the old landmark, we'll get back on a chop block and we'll get back in, into the machine that makes us preachers. We'll get back into the hands of the original apostles and what they taught us back in and find out who we are and what we are and where we are and who we to be and who we did not to be. You see, God, is something got to happen before Jesus comes. Yes. Yeah. Or else he's going to take the kingdom from totally from America and it looks like he's doing it. That's what he told Israel and they ain't got it back yet. That's been over 2,000 years and it still ain't got it back. You know, they could have, Israel could have been right in there. You know, he came to his own. He wanted to, to you know, even though he was not an Israelite, uh, but physically, he wasn't, but spiritually because Mary and Joseph, everybody thought he was their son, and Mary was his mama, but she was a virgin when she conceived him and, and when she birthed him. And they, they thought he was, you know, uh, one of Joseph's sons, but he was a son of God. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he'll always be the son of God. He didn't have one drop of human blood in his body because it had been proven a medical sign. The blood comes from the male no matter what it is. And Jesus' blood was the only man that ever was born into the world that didn't have an earthly father and born out of a virgin that never had a man touch her. Because Jesus Christ... Yes. wants to get in us spiritually. Yes. He made me and you tabernacles. He made me and you temples of God. And he said, I'll walk in you. I'll dwell in you. I'll live in you. Yes. Somebody a while back said, well, you just learned. No, I ain't learned nothing. It's God that has taught me. This ain't something I found. He said, follow love. It is our spiritual gifts. For that 
For he that speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no man understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. But he that prophesies, I have that testimony. That's what I want to dwell on. That prophecy here means the test. Jesus wants us to have his life, his testimony in our lives. Testimony in our lives. Thank God. Oh, we can have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And then we can get back over here in Mark 16 where he said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs. See, that's what I'm trying to cover and to get us back in. A, we don't have no signs no more. Most people are following signs instead of the signs following them. we got to get back, people. Our, our, our God right now, he, gradually, He's taking the kingdom from America. And it's gone in, in Canada. When I had the meetings in Canada, 85% believed in Christ. The last uh, account I had, only 2% in Canada believes in Christ. I preached in every major city during the winter months up there when the snow, them people come out in the snow back then. Preached in their, their, the big auditoriums and so forth in the early days. Even plumb on to the border of the country that joins them. I want you to know God is still that same God. He hasn't changed. He said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And, and the gates of hell can't stop it, see. And right now, the gates of hell and the devil is destroying everything out there. Something must be wrong with me. Something must be wrong with you. Somebody has failed. I fell, or somebody's fell because he said, upon this rock, I'll build my church, and the devil can't get it. Hell. Gates of hell or the devil himself can't even stand up against it. But he's turned them up. I said he's turned them up. Everybody in the church, sick. In the early day, in the Bible, he said if any sick, didn't say rush him to the hospital. He said get the elders. But you ain't got no elders no more. The elders had power with God. The elders was like uh, deacons and like preachers, pastors. Thank God. God gave them power. He gave them gifts. To, the people were sick. They didn't rush to the doctor. They went and got some of the church folks, the main members of the church, to pray over them, anoint them with oil, and somebody out of them, out of a group of five or six or seven, eight, uh, that prayed that prayer of faith, and the Bible said the prayer of faith singular shall save that sick, and the Lord shall raise them up, and if it was sinners, he said that would be took care of two. The sin be forgiven him too. Well, we can't even forgive a fly their sins. He said, now concerning the spiritual gift, brother, I will not have you ignorant. Went on to say, we was carried away. You know that you were carried away with these dumb idols, these, these false religions, if you want to put it in our day. Ain't that right? All these so-called holiness churches. They, they, they nothing there no more. We've been carried away with programs. When I come into holiness, hardly nobody went to the doctor. Even back then they still had midwives that they, they preached against them. And only a woman that back in those days that, that went to the doctor, she had problem delivering that baby. But now we're living in an hour that nobody hardly trusts God for nothing. Jesus tell us, he told us over in the Hebrews, I'm the same yesterday, 
today and forever. Then he tells the word Malachi, I am the Lord and I change it not. Therefore, you sons of God and you sons of Jacob, you are not consumed. You are still here. I, I'm the son of Jacob. You the son of Jacob, you say, and God had not cast us off into the ditch. He, we, he, he hadn't done away with us. We got to get back to God. You will. Somebody said the other day, he said, well, all, you, you just learned. This ain't something I just learned. It's genuine, real. He said here in 14 of John, the works that I do shall you do. Where are they at? I know there are not many here, but later the crowds maybe come on back. And I'm going to talk about this some more because other people need to hear this. Other people need to hear this. I know the, that uh, they call this the Blue Monday. But ain't no Blue Mondays and no Blue Sundays and no Blue Saturdays. When you get with God, I tell you, God's God and He always will be God. God when the lightning flashing. God when the thunders roll. God when the sun is shining. God down in my soul. I know God is God and He always will be God. How many wants that? I know God is God and always. God's looking for for evangelists. They, did you know right now you hardly know of any evangelists? When I first moved out to Dallas from an old town called Greenville, Alabama because I want to get out there while I was just getting started. Did you know Dallas at that time Gordon Lindsay was over like an overseer that over 400 healing evangelists in one movement. And Gordon Lindsay, he was the head of all of it. He was a man of God. I want you to know, folks, sometimes I look back in those days and finally went out there and Gordon Lindsay, if someone would come to one of my meetings, he wanted me to, to join him. I said, I won't do that, but... Uh, because I'm uh, going to, and he found out that I was doing a lot of missionary work, and he began to went with me on a few trips, and he resigned, being over the voice of healing, and he become a man that opened doors in over uh, 30 or 40 countries. He was some, he was a, some kind of a guy. He opened doors in every Latin America country. He opened doors in Africa. He even went behind the Iron Curtain in Russia. Thank God, and got me in there to, to hold some meetings in there. And that was dangerous in those days. But he risked his life to get me behind the Iron Curtain. They called it ten. I remember they called Russia the Iron Curtain. And went in there, and people got saved. They just as hungry as we are. They just been cut off. And it's almost like that in America today, where we just been cut off from old time uh, uh, salvation from heaven. But Jesus said here, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, Mark 16. And these signs to everybody, every creature, and these signs in my name they'll cast out devil. They'll speak a new tongue. They lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Yeah. But it's not happening. Uh, it's not happening like it ought to be. You don't hardly see any healing evangelists no more. You don't hear the voice of healing. They call that thing the voice of healing that's coming out of Dallas in those years. And uh, all them 400 preachers was out there somewhere uh, having uh, deliverance. There was times, I remember when I went to Mobile, I had to wait uh, seven years because they had Mobile tied up down there, you know, uh, that had only one big lot down there you get. And them lots was turning. I had a line of meeting up in Mobile seven years ahead to get that lot like, like this to put my old giant tent up. Jesus. Now where they put the tents up, they got buildings. <laughs> You know why we lost our we lost our way? But God said, if you come to me, God said, if you cast your cares, God said, if we get back to the nitty gritty, Mama used to tell us, get back to the nitty gritty. God will get back with us, won't He? If, if Hebrews thirteen and eight is truth, if Hebrews thirteen and eight is truth, and I believe it is, the same yesterday, 
today, yesterday, and today, and tomorrow, and when? Forever. We're just as real right now as we was 2,000 years ago because we still uh, reaching out. We still got forever ahead of us. That's all right. He's not coming today. He goes, how do you know? Well, he wouldn't take nobody back with him, Harley. That's all right. I believe he's coming after a number that no man can number. I mean, believe that. I mean, believe there's a number that no man can number, the Bible said, coming down from God, didn't he? Ain't it in there? There's a number that no man can number. That when Jesus comes, they've got to be. And you and a few others across this country and people that I don't know, I know has had this same vision and revelation. No doubt they're trying to get people back. Let's get back to straight as a gate. Let's get back to the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Let's get back and strive to enter straight gate. Let's get back to being baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of our sins. Let's get back back of taking up the cross of Jesus and let's carry this message let's get back to forsaking all to follow him houses lands and then what it takes if it if it gets in our way let's do God's work first and if you will you'll find that God will always somewhere or another reward you and he said go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. And these signs, Mark said. These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they will speak with new tongues thank you Jesus they shall take up serpents and I'll take that a little different from them snake handlers <laughs> I take them up after I kill them. <laughs> no, I, I, I just, uh, there's some people, I know that guy that was in Tennessee that used to do it. You know, he got bit a few times and he was boasting and I was up there in Tennessee back in the early days and, and he was ahead of that whole thing. You know, I've always had these crazy visions and I was up there, I don't know if it was Nashville or where, I told him I knew the guy's name. I said, the next time that that, that so-and-so called his name, I said, God didn't mean us running around handling rattlesnakes and all that kind of stuff. I said, he said, uh, he mentioned the Bible, a generation. If you find in the Bible, there is a generation of serpents. Ain't it in there? And I said, next time, and he'd brag about how them snakes bite him, couldn't hurt him. I saw him on TV. They have their own TV thing. I said, next time that uh, he handles snakes, he's going to bite him, and he's going to die before he gets to the doctor. Man, it wasn't but uh, a few weeks. He was up there in Tennessee, and one of them things bit him, and before they could even get him to the, uh, he, he was dying. They couldn't even uh, get him to the doctor. God don't mean, so I won't explain that when I talk about they should take up serving. He's not talking about you get out here and uh, uh, like some, uh, so many people do fires and carnivals, I mean carnivals, they learn how to handle them things. <laughs> I have two with a shotgun. I miss if I use a rifle. I take a shotgun, sometimes a double barrel, pull both triggers at once. Hallelujah, make sure. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I remember the last time I killed a snake there at the house. Uh, he was run up the wall, and he was about way beyond them buildings, the other fence around our house. And that snake got up them steps going up there, and I run up right behind him. It was a rattlesnake. And he's going, and I took that shotgun, and I aimed at his head, and I blew his head. And the fence was, would be nearly about over, way on over yonder. 
uh, beyond him uh, toilets. And that's when I pulled that trigger on the shotgun, it blew that head into that fence. And of course, he just died right there. I, said, I teach you, you devil, you. <laughs> And it hadn't rained in a good long while. And everybody was praying for rain. And, I, and back in where I grew up in Alabama, they said, if it don't rain, kill us. when you kill a snake, hang it up. You ever heard of that? Anybody ever heard if you uh, hang a snake up? No, he, he'd been around a while. <laughs> so it hadn't rained in so long in that area. So I went out there and I put that rattlesnake over that fence and he kept falling off so I just got something and tied him. Man it wasn't three days we had four or five inches of rain. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. Now whether that done it or not uh, how many heard that old saying when you just coming up? If you kill a snake hang it up. Y'all ain't never heard of that? It'll rain. And, and, I, and I ain't never seen it fail myself. Glory. But God is God. And we can get these gifts back. He said here in Mark, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They should speak with new tongues. They should take up serpents. And I explain that. Uh, I, I use that as a... Uh, generation myself and if you want to handle them you do it I ain't going to be around you when you do they should take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly won't hurt them and that guy he was up there drinking that poison bragging about it that scripture and man I could have told him people that was the biggest man in that movement I said next time that man takes that poison there's another one of his followers I forget his name I said he's going to die and he did. He didn't live 20 minutes. It's like that man th let them snakes bite him. He didn't live. Let me tell you something, folks. Well, the reason I explain that, you get people around here playing with snakes. You know, we the snakes that I handle has got two legs and two hands and one head. <laughs> Generation of vipers. And they shall speak with new tongues. So they went... So after the Lord had spoken of them, he was received up into heaven, sat on the right hand of God, and they went forth preaching everywhere. I said everywhere. And Matthew said, Go ye into the therefore and teach all nations. See, we're falling short. We've got to get this message of Jesus outside just uh, in our back door. They know missionaries hardly right now. Missionaries, you hardly find any missionaries anymore. But if we'll lay our lives down, if we'll take up the cross, Jesus is telling us in Hebrews 13, Jesus Christ, but Paul, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Why can't we accept this? He, he's, he's still that same God that turned the water to wine for the pagans. He's still the same God that interrupted funerals and raised the dead. When the time he interrupted funerals. There was a time he went to a grave that when they rolled stones, they said, roll the stone away. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. And a dead person in there. And he called them, and they come out of there after they was buried. Yeah, yeah. Resurrected from the dead. Yeah. He's that same God. He's at the right hand of God right now. The Father making an intercession to ever pray of faith. Everybody that's, is coming to God by faith. He's making it. He said, you pray to me and I pray to God. You ask me and I'll ask the Father. Whatever you desire when you pray, I'll pray to the Father and He'll give it to you. 
That's the kind of God we have. That's the kind of Lord we have. One that wants me and you to step back out here and accept Him. And I believe when that happens, you're going to find here, and I'll try to get in this later, now concerning spiritual gifts, I will not have you ignorant. And it goes on to how God has begun to set in the church at different gifts, miracles. You find 12, 13, and 14 where He uh, put these gifts back in the church. Right now, uh, there's no doubt in my mind if there's a handful of churches I don't even know one handful of church nowhere that's got these operations of these gifts back in it anymore. And that really hurts my heart. I said, that really hurts my heart. I don't know what the cause is. I know one thing that I know one thing that, that Jesus ain't the cause. I was over here on the jungles of Africa of them country hand heard preaching this. You couldn't count the miracles. You know, I pray mass prayers, but I usually, if anybody have ever been over with us, they know that I'll stand there sometime for two hours recently. And I'll probably stand next week in Mexico. I'll be in Mexico and I'll probably stand. I've seen the time I've stand, stood as high as four hours down there praying for the six individually. God is the Almighty that if me and you will come back and I've been praying, Lord, help me to get back. Thank you, Jesus. In 1956, when I went into this healing ministry after a 31 day fast, I was just going 30, but I didn't get the answer. And I went an extra day, and the Lord came. That's when He commissioned me. But I want you to know, I want to see the Lord in this country. If Brother Ramon was here or his son, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. I believe that little brother that him and his wife was fixing to go to Mexico. They already left. You know, I believe that they've been in some of our meetings, didn't they? Said they'd been in our meetings. They've been in our meetings down there. And they could tell you things that's just on but but God just is real here if we can get back, ain't he? All right, brother. If we do like they do, you know what they do? They rush out there just like the Bible said, into the streets and highways, taking in pamphlets and uh, that's printing their language and 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 getting people in them meetings. Not not too many preachers like me even lays hands on them, but I'm the I know I, I lay hands on them myself. Sometimes I may pray a mass prayer, but I've stood up there for hours and hours because I know I believe in the mass prayer, but I also believe that Jesus individually prayed for people. I believe that Jesus individually uh, told them to roll the stone away. I believe that Jesus individually. And he said, These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They'll lay hands on the sick. Didn't he? And they get well. And you can't take that out. Yeah, yeah. And you'll find throughout the scriptures, God wrought what by the Apostle Paul when he got saved? Special. Huh? Special. What kind of miracles? Special miracles. You looked that up, extraordinary healing. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Through the hands of Paul. And once he persecuted him, there was a time that the shadow of Peter healed him. There was a time the shadow of Jesus healed him. Yes, sir. Peter's shatter. You know, he couldn't you get them all and just uh, going. And I've done that myself. I've seen the time in some of these countries when, when I'd be in open air 
and a son and I'd be preaching and the people would be laying up on cots and stretchers and I'd tell them as I walked by and my shadow overshadowed them, them get off them stretchers and I never seen it fail. Thank you Lord because the people in these out of way places are so hungry, so hungry. I do lay hands on them but there's time to be so many. Whether you know or not I've seen as high as 500. I remember in Atlanta, Georgia we had as high as 500. We've had as much as 2,000 laying in cots and stretchers in these overseas meetings. But Atlanta, Georgia, we had as much as 500 people and I, on stretchers. And I'd stay out there sometime to 12, 1 o'clock, laying hands on them as they brought them across. The ambulance waiting. Finally, the ambulance is uh, bringing them out to They just want uh, you remember them meeting? Sir. Yes, sir. I was there in, them, in Atlanta, Georgia, when they brought them in everywhere from all over the country in Amelot and praying. I tell them, go home. Yeah. I almost leave them there. They'd get up and go. And, and, and I'm not talking about just two or three. I'm talking about hundreds of them. But you know, America's gone right now. But if we're overseas, but we can't come back. Something's got to happen to us for we're losing Jesus in this country. But he's still the same. I said, still the same. God ain't somebody over yonder in Africa or down yonder in Mexico next week and less up here. But you got to get hungry. You got to get a desire, as Paul taught us here, for the gifts. You know, back when I was coming up, uh, young preachers that love the Lord, maybe all of them wasn't sincere. But I remember the time the boy said he didn't have 400 sincere ones. And they weren't having miracles. Thank God. God's still the same. Look at the Jessops. Dad Jessop was a miracle man. He had seven sons and every one of them had a miracle ministry over in Mississippi. Every one of them had a miracle ministry. Thank God. God's still that same Lord. They didn't just speak a word to Him. Nowadays, everybody's praying a mass prayer because they're too lazy. I guess they're afraid they're going to stick their hands in something. <laughs> I tell them women, take them pins out of there. I've got stuck a few times. I said, take them pins out of <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. But God is real. Don't you know how many wants His? I feel there's some people right here today, if it ain't many of us, if it ain't but one of us or two of us or three of us can, can leave this place to, Lord, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to sell myself out to you. I'm going to deny myself out to you. I'm going to do everything I can to take up my cross. Yes. And just be that old song saying, there are people almost everywhere whose hearts are filled with flame with the power that fell at Pentecost comes in Jesus' name. It is burning now within my heart. Oh, glory to His name. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. One of them. One of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. They were all in an upper room, all in one accord. Then came the sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost to begin to speak in tongues. That's the Bible evidence that the Holy Ghost is come. Oh, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of of them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Oh, come my brothers, come my sisters, let's join up with them. Let's deny ourselves and be one of them. It will burn down in your heart. Your heart will be filled with flame. You'll be so glad that you will say, I'm one of them.
them, one of them, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. I'm one of them, one of them. I'm so, let's come to the altar, pray for America, pray for ourselves, one of them. I'm so glad that I can say I'm one of them. Come on, let's come everybody. Come on, let's pray and have the Lord to bless us. Come on, let's let's get we can, I can I don't believe the Lord to let me teach like this this morning. If he ain't gonna come back to us, do you? Come on, let's come back in here. Let's bombard these heaven. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Oh Father, we appreciate you. Thank you for the good word of God. Lord, we thank you for being mindful of us. Sending your word, Lord, encouraging our heart. Lord, that is up to us. You said your people. But you're called by your name if we'd humble ourselves to pray. Seek your face and turn. Lord, you give us the opportunity, every one of us, Lord. There's not many of us here this, this morning, but you privileged us to hear, Lord. It had to be that you wanted us to hear what was spoken. Lord, if we'll just surrender our wills, not let our wills, our desires, Lord, the things that we want to do be in the way.